Well, hello, hello, Kingdom Culture Women. I'm so glad you're on this call. And those who will listen to the replay on YouTube, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining us. And I'm so glad that you are here. And today we're going to talk about um, fasting. Before I get started, today is June 31st and today is Tuesday. So before we get started into this message, let's bow our heads and just invite the Holy Spirit. Let his words take over. Hallelujah. Well, Father God, we thank you, Lord. We're so grateful, Lord, Father God, for a new day, Lord. Your word says, Father God, your mercies are new every morning, Lord, in lamentations, and we believe it. And we speak that over our life today, Father God. We thank you for your mercies that are new. Hallelujah, Jesus. Holy Spirit, we invite you into this study, Father God. We ask, Father God, that you prepare our minds and our hearts, Lord, Father God, to receive it, Lord. You did not give us a mind of condemnation or shame, Father God, but of conviction and repentance and forgiveness, Lord. So I pray, Father God, that you use this message to glorify your name, to glorify you, Father God, in you alone, Holy Spirit, that we allow you to renew our mind, refresh our soul with the living water of the Holy Spirit. Father God, take over, take over, Holy Spirit, take over this call, Father God, that my words will only bless you, that my words will honor you alone, Father God. Get me out of the way, Lord. You get all the praise. This is all for you. This is all glory to you, worship to you, Lord. I thank you, Heavenly Father, for these opportunities that we can gather, Lord, and talk about your word, Father God, that we may grow and mature, Father God, to be more like you, Father God, to walk in that life that you have called us in obedience, Lord, Father God. And Father, Holy Spirit, this is your throne room. This is your platform. This is your call, Father God. I die to myself, Father God, Holy Spirit, that you may fill me, that you get all the glory. And I come against all works of the devil right now that wants to come here, confuse, destroy. Father God, your word, your truth. Heavenly Father, Spirit of truth, speak to us. I love you, Lord. Send the fire. Cleanse us. In Jesus' mighty name, I, we pray. Amen and amen. Well, ladies, um, this morning, um, my daughter asked me last night, mom, what do you want to name your title? I said, I don't know yet. So, I, you know, this morning I was praying. I was like, Lord, what do you want this title to be, Lord? I don't know. I can think of a lot of things, but I want to get out the way. And I felt like the Lord said, um, fast pass. I said, fast pass. He goes, yes, fast pass. And he made me think of the amusement parks. You know, when you go to the amusement parks and there's this huge long line or you can pay to get to the fast pass lane and go all the way to the front where you don't have to stand in line. <laughs> Come on, somebody. You guys know what I'm talking about. When my kids were little, I was like, oh, no, you want to get on that ride again? It's so long. But God is saying, you know what? Through fasting, we have access to the fast pass, guys. What does that mean? That fast pass, that fast pass is in, we mature, we grow faster who those who are hunger and thirst for the word of God. Amen. Amen. So it's called fasting pass, right? Get it? Fast pass and prayer, right? So why don't we fast and pray, right? So many Christians I know, um, they don't fast. They don't fast part of their walk. And, you know, I've asked some people, why don't you fast? And they're like, well, I only fast when I need to, when tough are, when times are tough. And yes, we should. Of course. Of course. There's we in the Bible, there's we see so many fasting for so many reasons. OK, I'm not going to just uh, lump it up for one reason. There's reasons. to. There's different reasons to fast. Absolutely. You going through something? Yes, you should fast, too. But it's also a lifestyle, guys. Fasting is a lifestyle. It's something that we should do. The Bible shows us that shows us how to fast. It explains to us, right, how we can fast, right? And we should for all seasons at all times. You know, Jesus says when you fast, not if you fast or ish or when you have trials. He says when. So he's expecting us to to fast, right? So I have learned that fasting is actually more challenging, guys, mentally than physically. <laughs> You know, once I started like really thinking about it mentally, guys, it's actually more challenging mentally than physically, right? If you want to succeed in fasting and to deepen your faith in your relationship with God, you will need to hold strong to your mind, to your mind, okay? When the, when the flesh and the body want you to quit, 
okay? Your mind has to go go up some gears, right? And be like, no, no, right? I made a decision, right? So when I recently, this is actually recently, I did a 21 day water fast. I've never done one. I never, ever, ever want, never done one. I didn't want to do it. I try to get out doing it, but you know, God just kept convicting me saying, you know, you can do it. Some people can't fast because of health reasons and that's understandable. Okay. This is not, again, I'm um, please don't feel guilty. Don't feel shame because this is not what this call is for. Okay. I understand some people have health reasons and they can't fast with foods, but there are different methods, methods. Okay. But right now, primarily I will talk about the food, right? So God says, you can fast my child, you know, you're healthy and you can, it's a gift. It's a blessing. So I said, okay, Lord. And it, and it is a blessing. It is a blessing. If we can fast guys to deepen our relationship with God. Okay. So when I was fasting, you know, um, and I knew that, you know, again, that God called me to do the water fast and I did everything possible, right, to to like get out of it. But God put it in my heart and my whole household was actually fasting, too. Everyone had different types of fasting. Everyone had different types and, and, and you know, everyone was different, which is fine. And everyone tried to avoid of eating in front of me because they knew I was doing the water fast. And they try to like not eat here. They try to eat out. And that was very nice and respectful. And I appreciated it. But then guess what? I did a mission trip and I had to be um, serving and I cooked in the kitchen like the whole entire weekend. I mean, I'm talking about delicious food, smelling good, everything, you know, and it was just my stomach, though, really wasn't hungry at that point. Um, I think I was already like maybe like two weeks and a half in. I really wasn't hungry, but my mind just smelling it. I mean, come on, how many know you smell good food? All of a sudden you're like, hmm, right? I want some, I want to taste that. And that's exactly what's kind of going through my mind, right? But at that point I had a decision, right? Um, what did I, ha what, I had a decision, right? To, to, to let my mind, you know, pick up in gear and say, nope, nope, right? Hold fast to my mind. And, 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 and say, no way, you know, I'm not going to quit. I made a decision. I'm not going to give in to the flesh and the body, right? I'm, I'm not going to quit. I knew that this was the real test. <laughs> like I said, my family avoided it, but now I was faced with in the kitchen, in my face and joining the ladies while they were eating. I was sipping on my water. I knew that's where the test comes. Okay. So the thoughts that come flowing through your mind, right? Should I resume now? Should I do it later? You know, sometimes that happens when we fast, right? The devil gets in our mind. Should I fast? Maybe it's not a good time. Maybe, maybe later, or maybe we give in too soon, right? The thoughts, the they come and they flow. The devil comes in and brings some of those thoughts to our mind, you know, and, and makes us doubt and think, is this the right time, you right? But, I, you know, or maybe you want to even compromise. Some people even, I've, I've seen it. I, people compromise in the middle of their fast. They do half water. They're like, well, maybe God says food. And then they eat food. And then they go back to water. And they go back and forth. It's like double-minded. It's like, make a decision. And I seen just this past weekend where a person did that, actually got sick to her stomach, guys, because she did water for so long. And then she went solid. And then when she went back to water, and then she went back to just pigging out and she got sick. She had a fever. She threw up. She had diarrhea. She, it really affected her GI. So it, it also affects our physical bodies, guys. When, you know, when we're doing water, we keep changing it. Um, you know, it's just, it, I just saw that this weekend. So sometimes the devil gets in and wants to tempt us just like he did Jesus. There ain't nothing new, right? He did it to Jesus. He's going to do it with us, right? You see, in fact, fasting actually exposes Okay, ready, drum roll. Fasting actually expresses how weak we are mentally. It actually expresses like our mentality, how weak it could be. You know, the first days of fasting are actually very uncomfortable, physical. You get headaches, you feel fatigue, mood swings, tiredness, et cetera, right? But after that, it gets a little easier, right? These are all part of fasting, guys. It's not the, it's, it's not the devil. It's the physical flesh that's making you feel, you know, it's your detoxing at the same time. So you're going to feel that, you know, oh, I can't fast. Oh, I have a headache. I've, I've heard it, you know, oh, I'm too weak, you know, and, and, it's part of the fast, guys. It's just part of the process. Our flesh wants food, okay? So my first point is Satan attacks the mind, okay? I haven't even really started, but I'm gonna try to get through this really quick because it's a lot to cover, but I really want you guys to get this message. So now the first point is set, Satan attacks the mind, okay? Um, 
The Bible says that Jesus was hungry after 40 days, Matthew 4, 2. And when he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights afterwards, he was hungry. So he fasted. And then after, I always question that scripture too. But after he was done, he was hungry, guys, just like we would feel hungry. It's interesting that when Jesus felt hungry, that's when Satan came and tempted him with food. I believe that's what happens when we fast. He wants to tempt us with food. The enemy plays mind games with us. He wants to make people to stop fasting. And even, even if they're not physically hungry, it's just an excuse, right? We, we listen to that voice. So a little short testimony. Um, I never, ever dream about food, never have. But we're like, we're just saying the devil likes to tempt. And one night I had a pic, I had a dream that, um, that I was about to take a bite of a sandwich and I was just about to take a sandwich, barely take a bite. And then quickly came to my words, the blood of Jesus covers me, the blood of Jesus covers me and boom, it was like gone. That image left like zap, like gone. I woke up, I was like, yes, Lord, thank you for reminding me. Thank you. The blood of Jesus covers me. Never took the bite of the sandwich in my dream, but he was trying to plant a seed in my mind, in my head to say, hmm, what about that sandwich? But you know what? Like the Holy Spirit brought to my remembrance in my dream and my sleep, the blood of Jesus covered me. And I was able to persevere drinking that, I mean, drinking water, the remaining of my fast. Glory to God, not to me. So he comes even in our dreams, guys, he comes. All right. So most of us, um, temptation, is during a fast happens, okay? You know, we have to make a decision in our heads, okay? Um, are we going to do the fast? We have to make a decision, right? Are we going to fast, right? Because our bellies are going to want food, you know, but mentally, you know, it's going to be a challenge. But physically, we, we shut down what the physical body wants to do, which is eat, right? Yes, my stomach did growl, guys. You know, it really was making a lot of noise like the entire time, right? But I did, I had to either listen to my stomach or either I had to listen to the commitment that I had made to God. And yes, it was a physical hardship, guys. Yes, it was hard. I'm not going to lie. It was hard. But when you fast, right? When you fast, like I said, it's more challenging in your mind than it is in your stomach. We see that when God, we see that with Daniel, God saw that Daniel said his heart he humbled himself when he was fasting. God already answered his prayers, it says. It says in Daniel 10, 12. And he said to me, do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard. And I heard and came forth your words. So when you make a decision to fast, God already, he already answered the prayer. He already heard the prayer, guys. He already saw his position, his posture. So that's what he does with us. The second point is make up your mind, okay? When you enter a fast, you know, I've noticed for myself when I I have used words like, I'll see how I feel, or I'll see how it goes, or I'll see how many days it goes. And, and, and I'll see how many, you know, I keep making all these adjustments and changes in my head. But I never finish my fast when I do that. OK, I shorten my fast and I, or I quit too soon or I don't I don't I don't, you know, I give up. I don't want to do it. So thoughts like this, you guys are an open door for temptation to get out of what God has called you to do. All right. Put once once you make up your mind, once you put up in your mind and you make a decision right to fast, you will realize how powerful your thoughts are. OK, it's that commitment. OK, um, God responds. As we saw with Daniel, God responds to our thoughts and our decisions and commit, do what we said we were going to do. Okay, you will be able to overcome temptations. You'll be able to commit in your mind to fulfill your commitment. Okay, you see, making up your mind first adds determination to your decision to go through with it. See, it starts with your mind first determine, make a decision to do it, to go through it. Once you complete the fast, your mind gets clear and you will have, and your willpower gets stronger. Once you make a decision, yep, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I got everything organized, got everything ready. Okay. It, it, it makes you like focus, like tunnel vision, like, all right, I'm going to do it. It's going to, I'm going to push right through it. Okay. The devil will try to mess with your mind guys during a fast. 
you guys know the, the scripture, resist the devil and he will flee, right? Resist it with the word of God, just like Jesus did, right? Jesus, Jesus showed us that example. The third point is fasting is feasting on God's word, okay? Hunger and thirst are normal signs of life, okay? So it's the same thing for our spiritual, guys. Our spirits, hunger and thirst, both are natural if there is a spirit within us. And if those who accepted Jesus and you have the Holy Spirit inside of you, yes, you physically hunger, but yes, you should also spiritually hunger and thirst for that, okay? Um, David says, my soul thirsts for you, Psalms 42, 2. Okay, um, the Lord Jesus says, blessed are those who are hunger and thirst for the righteousness, Matthew 5, 6. Your soul gets hungry and thirsty when it's not being fed daily. Fasting helps you to realize what your spirit feels when you're not eating spiritual food for days and, and weeks, okay? Your spirit will be depleted if you're not feeding it. It hungers, it thirsts. And when you fast, okay, you will see how just how much your spirit needs that nourishment, needs that fuel, that food, that 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 encouragement to walk in, in the word of God of what he has called you to do. Okay. Um, humanity first, it's interesting actually how um Humanity, huma humility, humanity is what I meant to say. Humanity first came to temptation in the garden with food, with Adam and Eve. If you guys remember that through the fruit, that was the first temptation of man. And Jesus' first temptation in the wilderness was also with food. And Israel, the first temptation also in the desert was with food and water. Interesting how God took um, Israel through the fasting right after the deliverance of Egypt. When God delivered them out of Egypt, out of slavery, he took them into the wilderness and God right there was teaching them already how to fast. So it says, so he humbled, the word says, so he humbled you, allowed you to hunger and to feed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know that you might make you know that man should not live by bread alone, but man should live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. Deuteronomy 8, 3. Right there, he's telling them. He allowed them to go hungry allow, and gave them supernatural angel food manna, right? Dependent, showing them that we're not just to depend on food, guys but also spiritual food and that we live by God's word, right? Let that sink in for a second. It's not just physical food, but we need the spiritual nourishment. And God was showing them out of the, right out of their deliverance. Okay, let, let this, let, let's get hungry. So let's feed on his word, guys. Fasting is a reminder to them and to us that there is more of being human than just feeding our bodies, guys. Our spirit alone needs spiritual food. That is why the word of God is called bread. <laughs> you notice why it's called bread? We eat it. We feast it. We nourish our soul, right? We drench it. We let it penetrate it. We meditate on it. We let it stick into us to believe that what God says is that is who we are, okay? So unfortunately, as we read in Israel, we do hear the sad truth that in the wilderness, what did they do? What did they do? They complained instead of feeding their spirits. They questioned God, faithfulness, instead of feasting on his promises. They failed to feed on the most part of who they were, spiritual. We're spiritual beings, guys. They have been fasting, okay? They should have been fasting, and receiving the manna, I mean, come on now, you guys get manna from heaven, we do, if we do, what, right, what, right, they were getting food from heaven, and they were complaining, right, if they, if they would have been fasting, then, and when their bodies, right, were actually going through that fasting, right, um, this was not to say only when we're fasting, but 
You know, they should have been feeding on their spirit, not just then, but they should have captured that moment. They should have listened to God's word right there and then and saying what he was trying to teach them, right? They held on to the physical things, just like we do sometimes. We hold on to the physical things, the social media technologies. We idolize people. We want to be like them. We see them on platforms. We see their hair. We see their eyes. We see their body. You know, we are going after these, these worldly things instead of really focusing on God's word, who he says we are, just like he was trying to tell them back then, okay? When we are actually, guys, we are we are spirit beings, okay? In the times of fasting, right, it's important because it what it does it resets our it resets our our, our minds. It it helps us to understand of really who we are. It shows us our weakness. It shows us um, spiritual sensitivity to God. It it feeds our our dry bones, their spirits. It 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 it, it helps us to to be alert to refocus on back to him we are spirits who have a soul and a mind and if we live in yes we live in this body but if we neglect the truth we are faced of the dangers of being ruled by our senses our feelings our emotions instead of being led by our inner spirit which is connected to the holy spirit and letting the holy spirit lead us we let all the world and our emotions and all this stuff to 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 guide us it's it's led us to drive us and that's not we're not made to, for let that to to guide us we're meant to the holy spirit to guide us to his word to guide us right matthew 4 4 says man should not live by bread alone okay um we're not just a physical body guys we're a spiritual being too we need to feed our spirits right we're not, we don't just live by the bread, by physical bread, right? But by his word, this it's, it's basically like what he was telling the um, Israel in Deuteronomy 8, 3, right? We, you don't just live by the word of the bread alone, right? But man lives by every word that proceeds of the mouth of the Lord. That's the words we live by. Peter also says that we need spiritual food. And first Peter Chapter two, verse two to three, it says like newborn babies, right? Newborn babies, what do they crave for? Food, right? They want attention, <laughs> right? They want that nourishment, right? Crave spiritual milk, right? So that so that by it, you may grow up, grow up in your salvation now that you have tasted and see how good the Lord is, right? Amen. Once you fasted and you're you see you you see clear now you you feel you feel full you feel like all right I know my identity I know my call I, I saw some breakthroughs I hear the devil coming but he's a liar and then you start using the words and you start seeing him flee it starts helping you you know mature giving you stronger willpower against the works of the devil and 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 able to walk in that wholeness and holiness that God has called us to do amen because we are spirits we live by every word that proceeds from the word of god but whatever god says that's who you are guys not by our emotions our thoughts or what other people say we don't that doesn't feed should not feed us yes maybe they're seeing a glow a difference or something. hallelujah praise glory be to god but it does it should not feed our ego or our pride no god gets the glory it should make you want more of god because you see that transformation take change. Amen. Give your spirit a feast by consuming God's word. And the fourth one is don't doubt, guys. Don't doubt. The devil cannot defeat us. Did I miss some? I hope I didn't. And forgive me if I, if I did. I said feasting on God's word. I think I did do that. Uh, um, okay. Sorry. Fourth one. Don't doubt. The devil cannot defeat us until he disarms us and his best tactic to do so is to make us doubt yes once he disarms us and we start have, we allow doubt to come in all right we doubt god's word we ignore it you know we don't believe it uh, or we block it from our mind we're like mm, that's for somebody else that's not for me i'm not there when we block that all right 
Jesus warned us about what happens when we disregard God's word. In Matthew 13, 19, it says, um, when anyone who hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and he snatches it away of what was sown in his heart. So you read it and you don't receive it. You don't meditate on it. You don't believe it. You ignore it. The enemy is going to come snatch it away. And you're not going to get blessed. You're not going to maturely grow. You're going to allow the lies of the devil saying it's not for you. But it is for you. It's all for you. It's all for us. That word is for us. Put your name in it instead of Moses. Put your name instead of there, Paul. You know, put your name there instead of Esther, the Deborahs, right? The Marys. That's you. That's you. A hundred percent. That's you. But we must not let um, that doubt. And if you're struggling with doubt, ask God. Hey, Lord, I'm struggling. I'm struggling with doubt. I do that sometimes. Lord, help me. Help me with, is there's any unbelief? Lord, help me, Lord. Help me, help me, Jesus. Like, I'm not perfect either. Lord, Father, help me. I need faith, I need faith Lord. I need faith because right now I don't understand the scripture. And it's okay I don't, you don't understand it. You know what? Research it or do some more study and do a word study or call someone who can help you, give you a little bit of revelation or can pray for you or call on the Holy Spirit. He's our teacher. But don't say, I don't understand it. I'm going to leave it alone. You know, or say, Lord, I don't understand it. And just give it back to God. Lord, when your time is perfect, reveal it to me so that I can receive it. And that's all, all of that is perfectly okay. But to just ignore it, shut the Bible. I know a lot of people say, I don't understand the Bible, so I don't read it. Like, well, I started the same way. <laughs> you know, I st I'm still challenged with it, you know, but I'm in it every day, every day. And that's what we got to do because he sees the position. We got to keep feeding it. We got to keep feeding it. We got to keep feeding it. Maybe read songs, maybe read Proverbs, maybe read a chapter, maybe read a word. Maybe if it's about lust, maybe if it's about selfishness, maybe it's about pride, maybe start looking for those uh, verses in the Bible. Maybe if it's fear, maybe, but do something that's where I'm going with this is you have to at least feed something to you. The more he gives you, the more you're going to get hungry, the more you're going to feel like it's not enough, the more you're going to feel you don't know anything. Hallelujah. Welcome to the club. <laughs> That's totally me. But I still keep feeding myself, right? I let God continue to feed me and I receive it. And, and, and he's always going to give us revelation guys. Cause he, that's what, who, who he is. He doesn't want to hide from us. He wants us to know who he is. He wants us to walk in the call. He called us to be, he wants to equip us. He wants to fill us with his word and his truth. And if you're not receiving that, believing that that's the lying dirty devil. And we need to shut him up in the name of Jesus. Cause he doesn't get to speak over our life. Amen. So here it goes, sisters and, and friends. Fasting is more about the spiritual food and less about abstaining from physical food, okay? It serves as a great reminder that we are spirits who also need spiritual nourishment every day. We need our vitamins. Those are vitamins. Those are elements. Those are those are our, 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 our breath. Those are our, our, um, our, what helps us to get started in the day, right? To listen to God's word so that we know how to walk in that, okay? Therefore, fasting, therefore, if you are fasting and not feasting on him, then that's actually called dieting or starvation, okay? So if you're fasting, you need to be reading. You need to be in his word, okay? Um, real fasting is actually feasting on God's word while you're taking a temporary pause from physical food. When you're fasting, replace your meals, right? Replace your meals with God's reading, with God's word, right? Meditate on his word. Do memorization in scriptures. There's all kinds of apps out there that can help you do that. Um, pray or listen to some teachings or, or you know, um, just feed yourself. Draw, draw something um, prophetic. Um, write a, a poem that God's giving you, um, Something daily that is nourishing you, okay, etc. Whatever it is, writing. Um, stop all. Inter I would recommend like stopping all entertainment, unnecessary activities instead of instead of you know that are instead do edifying things that will help you nourish your spirit, okay. And don't. And then drink deeply from the living rivers of the Holy Spirit. So what is it that is preventing you from fasting, guys? This is not a, a, a 
a popular subject. This is not a popular theme. This is something that we don't like to talk about. But there's so many breakthroughs. There's We see that Jesus started his ministry after he fasted. We saw that he got baptized by, by John the Baptist. And we see that the Holy Spirit hovered over him. And then we see that the Holy Spirit, then he was led. The Holy Spirit led him into the wilderness and to fast. And then we read after he fasted, his ministry started. The kingdom is at hand. That's when his ministry started. So something happens when we fast, guys. We get our calling. We get closer to God. We get revelation. It shows us about us, the pruning. It shows us our mental weakness. It breaks down temptations. If you're struggling with something, it helps us to get mentally stronger and given into that temptation. You don't feed the temptation. You feed onto God's word and you're going to see how your mind and your feelings and your emotions will change. They will not, you will not give into it, but that you will give into God. Me personally, I've seen so many breakthrough with God. I've seen, this is how I got my calling actually. It's through that. It's through fasting and praying for a whole year and just asking God, if not longer, just asking God, show me, show me, show me. But first he had to start with me. He had to do with me, with my, and he was showing me so many things about myself that are super uncomfortable that it was, I was in the pruning season and we're always going to be in the pruning season, but he was showing me some raw things that I didn't see if I didn't fast and if I didn't call on his name, nor if was I, fe if I wasn't feasting on his word, we need to stop trying be in denial and a step you know what I can't do this on my own and you right you can't I can't you know and I'm still fasting I'm still learning I'm still growing and God has called us all to fast because he has bigger plans for you guys he has the blueprints he has a calling for all of you guys because he loves you so it's not just once a year, you guys, we're, we're going to continue to fast every month like we have been last year. And if you're not on this fast group, um, WhatsApp and Facebook, join, we'll post it, join this call, guys, because it's encouraging. We need to do this as a body or individually, but it has to be part of our lifestyle. It's not if you feel like it, it's we should. There's so much to learn from this, you guys. And I hope that this message blessed you. Because it has blessed me and I've learned so much. And I, and I thank you guys for joining me on this call. And if you haven't accepted Jesus and maybe you want to repent um, and, and you have some sin that you want to confess, um, you know, you can say it out loud. You can post it or keep it between you and God. It doesn't matter. It's between, it doesn't matter. Um, it's just confession, you know, with repentance. God is a good guy. He forgives and he gives us restarts. Amen. Or maybe you walked away, you want, or you don't know Jesus. If you can just repeat after me, today is the day. So, Father God, Lord Jesus, we repent, Father God. We repent from all our sins, Father God, for walking away of the things you've called us or disobeyed or disregarded or ignored what you have told us, Lord Jesus. Forgive us, Lord, for all our wrongdoings, Father God. And Father um, Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. I believe that you died on the cross and you rose in three days. Holy Spirit, Father God, I thank you, Jesus. And your word says that if I believe, Father God, in my heart and I confess it with my mouth that Jesus is Lord, that I will be saved, Lord. I thank you for the salvation, Father God. And Holy Spirit, I, I ask, Father God, that you fill me with the Holy Spirit, that you baptize me with the Holy Spirit, Father God. And from this day forward, Lord, I want to follow you every day of my life, Father God. Take over my mind mind and father god that lord in my heart cleanse it purify it lord jesus remove all toxins impurities um sin anything and everything lord that is not of you jesus i give you permission i thank you and i bless you in the name of jesus lord father god i thank you for this message may we continue just to just seek you lord father pursue you father god because you're the answer lord father god you are the answer help us to lord to, to really ask ourselves, what is it that prevents us from fasting? Why don't we want to fast? Why don't we want to draw closer to you? Why, why Show us our weaknesses, Lord Father God, that Lord, that you will make us stronger, Lord Father God. I Because Paul says, Lord, he'd rather be weak so that he can be strong in you, Lord. And that's what we desire, Lord Father God. Take over, Holy Spirit. I love you and I praise you. And it's a name in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. Amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus.